It is 7 a.m. Saturday, Queensland time on this 19th of January, and this is the latest update on a tropical low in the Gulf of Carpentaria. The Bureau of Meteorology is now issuing tropical cyclone advice on this system, and their latest track takes the center of the low back into the southern Gulf over the next couple of days, and you can see by 4 a.m. on Monday, it is forecast to reach Category 1 cyclone intensity, and that is the reason why cyclone watches are now in effect for the eastern and southern regions of the Gulf. The overnight standard infrared satellite imagery shows us as well that the center of circulation is still just to the south of the fuel source, that being the open waters of the ocean. So that is the reason why we are not seeing much in the way of development, and little in the way of development is expected over the next 24 to 36 hours. But we are already seeing copious amounts of rainfall. Just within the past 21 to 24 hours, Mornington Island has received nearly 100 millimeters of rainfall and this is starting to turn into a very active rainfall pattern with the potential for this low to remain nearly stationary in the Gulf region for the next several days and beyond. It is important for viewers to understand that in terms of the model guidance there is a lot of disagreement this morning and that is because the models are in contrast with one another as to which vorticity maximum will have the best potential to generate a tropical cyclone. The following graphics is a 24-hour overview of the low-level vorticity, which can tell us where the greatest concentration of low-level convergence is located and where the best chance of surface low formation will be. So this was 24 hours ago, and then we are going to stair-step using 6-hour increments, and you can see that there are two primary spokes of vorticity in the low levels, and as we go deeper into the time period closer to where we are now, you can see that there is a secondary vort maximum located over the Cape York Peninsula. Now some models, including the GFS, are trying to develop this low as it continues to move eastward into the Coral Sea. However, there is just as much, if not more, growing support that at least some low-level energy will be held back over the Gulf region, and if it meanders back into the open waters of the Gulf, we could see substantial development in this area. So this is something that forecasters are going to have to really try to figure out over the next 24 to 48 hours, and hopefully we start to see better model agreement. Until we gain a better model consensus, all we can really do is speculate based on some of the latest information and data that we are receiving from weather observations, and we can see that based on the wind shear product, the best upper level conditions are still out across the Gulf. As you head more toward the Coral Sea, we still have this upper level low near the Queensland coastline, so we still have more in the way of vertical wind shear in that region, as you can see on the color representation. So if anything, this would lead me to believe that the conditions are a little more favorable out west, so there is more reason to believe that more energy will be held back over the Gulf instead of focusing everything more so into the Coral Sea. Nonetheless, this morning's run of the American GFS model is still adamant about developing a secondary low near Cooktown, Australia, in the Coral Sea over the next 24 and 30 hours, and this still seems very suspect. Once again, the GFS does suffer from convective feedback issues. It cannot handle the convection, and oftentimes it develops too many surface lows as we get a lot of convection, and that could lead to falling surface pressures, but the GFS just overdoes it too often. And as we go into 48 hours, that coral sea low is continuing to intensify into a robust tropical cyclone. But even with this depiction, with the storm moving out into the coral sea, there is still energy being left behind in even this model over the Gulf of Carpentaria. And as we go into day four and day five, we definitely begin to see this with a significant tropical cyclone developing just to the west of the Cape York Peninsula. And with the steering currents being relatively weak throughout the forecast period, it is left to meander around the open waters and potentially continue to intensify. And as we transition to the GFS mid-level steering forecast, as we go into 24 hours, we can still make out that the ridging out across interior Australia is not overly strong at this time, and there is still remnant troughing out across the Coral Sea. And that makes sense because as we saw with the water vapor imagery, there is still an upper level low parked over the central and southern Coral Sea. So anything that were to develop just to the east of Queensland is likely to feel the effects of that trough and get quickly shunted off toward the east or southeast. So that part of the forecast in the GFS with that first storm comes as no surprise. However, the concern is if we get a secondary development in the Gulf or if the Gulf low becomes the primary area for formation altogether, eventually the ridge will start to build back over Western Australia and the flow along the northern periphery of that ridge will generate more of a track toward the west or south. And you can see this as we go into day five. The tropical cyclone is being seen more so in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere now that it's starting to gain intensity, and that ridge is going to help to push it back toward the west. However, toward day six, notice that there is a subtle shortwave trough 
passing through some of the southern territories and that is the reason why it, the ridge once again breaks down so instead of moving west directly into the top end it simply moves south and then starts to dissipate over the northern territory. Meanwhile the latest 12Z run of the ECMWF which is oftentimes more reliable is actually showing a much more simplistic scenario. As we go into 24 hours and 48 hours you can see that the main low is still out across the southern gulf and as we go into day three and day four it is not buying into the idea that the main low will develop to the east of Queensland. It is still focusing all the energy into the Gulf, and we are definitely seeing at least a Category 1 cyclone by this time. And by day 5, it is now trapped with very weak steering currents, so it is left to meander around the Gulf while continuing to strengthen. And this would be a significant tropical cyclone landfall for the western and southern regions of the Gulf over the next 5 to 7 days. This is now the mid-level steering forecast from the ECMWF, and you're going to continue to notice that there are a lot of similarities between the GFS and European runs in terms of the overall steering mechanisms. It's just a matter of how differently the models are handling the convection and which lows will become more dominant, because otherwise there is pretty good agreement. This is now 72 and 96 hours. The main low is out across the Gulf. The ridge is returning to Western Australia, and by day five and day six, we are starting to see a weakness in the eastern periphery of the ridge as we do have that trough passing in toward Tasmania and that would be potentially just enough to turn the storm to the south and then have it finally make landfall. The operational run of the ECMWF also appears to have support from the Ensemble mean which is an average of the 51 different European model members and as we go into day three and day four and even day five you can see that the European ensembles are also appearing to develop the storm primarily in the Gulf and as we go into day six and day seven it is starting to take that southwest path towards the northern territory but don't be overly concerned yet even if the Gulf flow were to remain nearly stationary if it continues to hug the coast throughout this time then there is a good chance that we will not be dealing with a significant tropical cyclone so land interaction will continue to be the wrench in the intensity forecast and we've already seen the low meander around the coastline more than expected over the past 36 hours. So to be able to tell you what the intensity will be four and even five days out from now, that's almost impossible to say. So the bottom line is that the models have not helped forecasters much overnight. There is still a lot of model disagreement, which is to be expected with any tropical entity that is very slow moving and also still somewhat disorganized. But interests across the Gulf and northern Queensland, including the Cape York Peninsula, all interests there are advised to keep up with the weather over the next several days. Even if the tropical cyclone does not become overly significant, it is already apparent that we are dealing with a significant heavy rainfall and flooding situation. We're already seeing those rainfall totals creep upward near the coastline, and those totals are only going to increase as time goes on. So stay tuned to the Bureau of Meteorology for more updates and we will continue to supplement the information with more videos here at 28storms.com.